Now I'd like to start my presentation. Near infrared spectroscopy can be used to observe the change in the hydrogen bonded network of water. For example, the temperature dependence of near infrared spectrum of water is shown here. As the temperature rises, strongly hydrogen bonded water decreases, while weakly hydrogen bonded water increases. In this experiment, these seven organic compounds were used as solute affecting the hydrogen bonded network of water. These compounds have multiple amino groups. The measurement conditions are shown here. MCRLS, which is one of the spectral component separation methods, was used for analysis. The schematic and formula of MCRLS are shown here. Observe spectral aqueous solutions of ethylenzyamine and pure ethylenzyamine are shown. Analysis of the spectra using MCRLS provides these three components. Dependencies of the abundances of each component on concentration and temperature are shown here. These results suggest that component one, two, and three are these. Similar results were obtained for other solutes. Here, we focused on the behavior of component two. Concentration dependencies of abundances of component two for each solute are shown here. For all solutes, the abundance or uh, abundance increases as the concentration increases at the lower concentration, revealing that all solutes affect to strengthen the hydrogen bonding network, then decreases at the higher concentration. Comparison of maximum increases of component two among the solutes reveals these trends. The results obtained here for alkan polyamines are similar to those obtained for polyhydric alcohols, suggesting so that hydrogen bonded network of liquid water is affected upon mixing of compo organic components with the hydrocarbon chain, mainly by the hydrophobicity of the carbon chain and not by the functional groups. Please come and ask me for details. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you very much. The next speaker is um, Qin Dong from Shang Shandong University in China. Hello everyone, I'm Qin Dong from Shandong University, China. Uh, the topic for the presentation today is NIR study of molecule interaction in ethanol water mixture ranging from 0 to 10%. Our research focuses on the purification of plasma proteins, which use a lot of ethanol. So studying the interactions of these molecules is essential. In this study, 0 to 10 percent ethanol water solution were prepared and the related spectra were collected. The method we used for the data processing include uh, excess spectra and Gaussian fitting with the knowledge of aquaphotomics. Here is the result. This is the original uh, spectra and this is the excess spectra. The position of excess spectra is plotted against the ethanol concentration which clearly shows three different stages according to the slope, 0 to 3%, 3 to 7%, and 7 to 10%. According to the theory of excess spectra, when the ethanol concentration lower than 7%, the, hydri the hydration effect plays a major role, and when the concentration higher than 7%, the hydrogen bonding interaction between these molecules uh, became a main factor affecting the structure, uh, uh, affecting the structure and the spectra of the mixture. 
Here is the result of Gaussian fitting. This is the fitting result, and this is the variation of integral intensity of different uh, water species, SR, S0, S1, 2, S4. We can clearly say SR and S0 decrease with the S0 concentration increase, and S1 to S4 increase firstly, and then decrease. The turning point for S4 is 3%. The reason that from 0 to 3%, uh, the mixture process undergo the hydrophobic hydration, uh, which make water structure uh, arranged in order, followed by hydrophobic hydration, uh, break this kind of structure. In conclusion, NRR was adopted to distinguish the different stages uh, of the mixture process of ethanol and water. Uh, thanks to our lab for the collaboration and the financial support from this department. And uh, if any question, welcome to visit our poster number two for a uh, deep discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, um, now the next presenter is Yashi Yashuhiro Miwa from Kobe University, Japan. <coughs> Hello, I'm Yashuhiro Miwa uh, from Kobe University in Japan. Uh, I will talk about the study of tetrabutyl ammonium bromide hydrate by two spectroscopies in terahertz region. First, I will talk about semiglass rate hydrate, which is the subject of our research. Semiglass hydrate uh, seems to look like ice and is derived from class rate hydrate typified by methane hydrate. Semiglass hydrate <coughs> have a cage structure. Uh, it consists of gas molecule and host molecule. Host molecule are green ball is oxygen atom. Uh, hydrogen bonding cage structure. Uh, gas molecule is entrapped in the cage. Uh, Although one of water molecule is replaced with a part of guest molecule. Uh, among many kinds of guest molecules, uh, tetrabutyl ammonium bromide is well known. Compared to class rate hydrate, semi class rate hydrate has two features. One is mild product condition, and another is empty uh, semi class rate hydrate has empty cage. Therefore, they have a potential for using storage and transportation of gases, especially hydrogen. For better storage efficiency and thermal stability concerning stability of cage structure, it is essential to understand interaction of guest guest and guest host molecule and hydrogen bond on the cage structure. To observe those interaction, intermolecular interaction, observation in the terahertz region is suitable. That is why we observed the TBAB hydrate and plus TBAB crystal using two spectroscopies, less than about three terahertz. We use two spectroscopies. One is terahertz time domain spectroscopy, another is low frequency Raman. And samples were prepared according to the procedure shown on the slide. Finally, uh, this time we revealed two things. One is that we revealed two peaks in crystal and a broad one peak in hydrate. Both of them 
these peaks is based on translation mode. Another is peak shift lower wave number from crystal to hydrate. It means that effect of interaction interionic distance is larger. Whereas we consider that hydrogen bond may be reduced the decrease in binding energy. Thank you. The next presenter is Tomoko Nakagama, Nakagahama <laughs> from Kobe University. Go. Hello, my name is uh, Tomoki Nagahama from Kobe University. Uh, the topic is molecular dependence of collagen model peptides studied by low frequency Raman spectroscopy. Collagen is uh, collagen from triple, triple helical structure uh, in water, uh, but it is not clear why the triple helical structure is stable. To reveal that, we use collagen model peptide uh, PPG. It is uh, it forms uh, triple helical structure uh, like collagen uh, when n, uh, when n is ten. But it doesn't form. Uh, it doesn't form when it uh, when n is five, uh, because uh, the molecular change uh, the molecular change is too short. Uh, we compare uh, these two sample. Next experimental section, uh, we use low frequency Raman spectroscopy. It reflect. Uh, it reflect the vibration of higher order structure, so we may be able to reveal uh, why the triple helical structure is stable. Next, result of discussion. There is the low frequency Raman spectra of PPG10 in this row and PPG5 in this row and this row. There are some kind of peaks in there. We focus on blue line at around uh, 170 wave number. This peak is a sign that stretching of hydrogen bondings in water. The peak position is higher when the water is bounded. And next, uh, thi <laughs> this is the peak, uh, the peak of position of PPG10, PPG5, and D2O. Uh, please look at P uh, the data of PPG10. Uh, it shift lower, while uh, this all shift higher. It is suggested that hydrogen bonding uh, of water uh, weakened. Uh, weakened. Uh, it is uh, because the triple helical structure is uh, formed and it makes a new uh, new hydrogen bonding with water, and uh, hydrogen bondings water uh, is disordered. Thank you. So the next speaker is Nami Uemo Ueno from Kinda University. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Nami Ueno from Kinda University. Um, okay. So we have the attention about polymer electrolytes (PEs). So especially we com uh, we we have attention about the combination of polyethylene glycol (PEG) and the lithium salt. So PEs are very hygroscopic materials, but they dislike. Uh, humidity because they use as an uh, electrolyte for region batteries. So hydration is a one of serious problem for PEs. 
Okay, so our study is to observe the hydration effect for poly, uh, polymer electrolyte using the electronic transition of PEG polymer, and also our study is to uh, uh, to find the reason of the hydration effect for uh, PEs. So we already found the uh, changes of electronic trans electronic transition of PEG um, by forming complex. Ah, um, I'm sorry, uh, P, is, uh, P is also an uh, alkali metal complex in, in these studies. So we already found the uh, changes of electronic tension by forming complex, and uh, so, but it is very difficult to observe the transition in transition in this case because we need to ob uh, we need to observe the transition in uh, in 140 to 200 nanometer FUV regions so this is a superhero in this in this region so because so ATR FUV became very easy to observe the electronic transition from n orbitals around 160 nanometers so, for example, water, alcohol, and ether, and words. So, but I don't, uh, I don't mention the detail of this spectroscopy because it was already uh, explained by Professor Morisawa in this morning. So, please remember the ATRFV is a powerful method to observe the electronic transition from n orbitals. So, so they, uh, they are. Uh, Experimental result of the electronic transition of P PEs so by hydration progress and concentration changes. So both of them show very similar spectra. So please look at the hydration progress. So absorption spectra is dramatically changes from dry state to hydration state. <coughs> So and surprisingly, uh, in this progress, uh, amount of the absorbed water is very, very little. So this result is very surprising. And more interestingly, so if you, if you spectra show these dramatically changes, but we cannot observe the observe these changes by vibrational spectroscopy, for example, Raman and IR. So this is very uh, interesting result for us. <coughs> uh, in my poster, I show more information about electronic and vibrational spectroscopy about polymer electrolytes. And there, I consider the reason of these hydration changes. So please come and discuss my poster. So thank you for listening to my presentation. So next is Takahiro Ohashi from Kyo University. Hello everyone, my name is Takahiro Ohashi from Kyo University. Today I am here to talk about my study, Can We Separate the Kind of dr Drinks Using Only AEZ? First, let me tell you about background. Usually we get drunk when, alcohol, when we drink alcoholic beverage. But some people get drunk when they drink non-alcoholic beverage. So they, there are two kinds of drunkenness. One is by alcoholic beverage, and the other is by non-alcoholic beverage. No one knows these two kinds of drunkenness are same or not. Because drunkenness due to non-alcoholic beverage is unclarified. Next point is the motivation. Drunkenness causes when alcohol components reach at the brain. And its symptom is its symptoms are acceleration, decline of judgment, and so on. So we use EEZ to know about drunkenness. Because in prefrontal cortex, EEZ reflects emotion and judgment. Therefore, there is the possibility that we can separate two kinds of drunkenness using EEZ. This is the experiment. We, we set up two days experiment. In the first day, 
subject drink non-alcohol beverage. And in the second day, subject drink alcoholic beverage. This is the flow of experiment. EEG was measured for 60 minutes after drinking the beverage. At this time, subjects were in resting state with their eyes opened. I will explain how data were analyzed and result. This is the flow of analysis. First, preprocessing was performed. In this step, we used band pass filter to extract EEG. Secondly, frequency translation was performed. In this step, we used fast Fourier transform and calculated power spectra. Finally, classification was performed. In classification, we used two sample t test and support vector machine. And this is the comparison of power spectra between non-alcohol and alcohol. Significant differences are, were detected in two heads and four heads. We use this power spectra as features of SVM. As a result, separation rate was 76.3%. So we can say the reactions of two kinds of drunkenness were, uh, are different. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening. Keisho Sato from Keio University. Go ahead. Hello, everyone. <coughs> My name is Keisho Sato from Keio University. Uh, today, I'd like to talk about my research entitled Sleep Quality and Workspace Productivity Evaluation on the uh, Uten Interview. Firstly, I'll talk about background. It is necessary to improve work, uh, workspace productivity. Workspace productivity, oh workspace productivity means uh, <coughs> amount and quality of intellectual work. Uh, that can be performed within a certain period of time. Uh, this figure means relationship between uh, workplace product productivity, uh, sleep quality, and the interior. This connection is the one uh, declining workspace productivity due to lack of sleep. Uh, this connection is the two uh, improving sleep quality due to better with the interior. So it is necessary to evaluate sleep quality and workspace productivity on the Uten interior. From the back, uh, background, uh, motivation of my research is uh, sleep quality and workspace productivity evaluation on the Uten interior. Uh, one night's experiment was conducted twice in Uten or non uten room. Uh, measurements of biological signals were uh, conducted, uh, PSG and EEG. Uh, sleep and stress data were uh, conducted. <coughs> uh, I'll talk about experiments. Uh, as for sleep data, uh, biological signals were measured during sleep uh, using PSG device. And sleep stages, meaning sleep quality, were determined. As for EEG, EEG measurements were performed using a uh, single channel device. Uh, and stress values were obtained by EEG data using Kansei analyzer. I talk about results. Uh, all of these uh, are in the 10 condition. As for sleep quality, quality was improved. As for workspace productivity, increased rate of uh, typing task was raised. As for EEG, uh, stress values was reduced. In conclusion, uh, it was confirmed that the Ute interior had positive influence on sleep quality and workspace productivity. Uh, that's all. Thank you for your kind attention.
Next speaker, Kento Norita from also Keio University. Go ahead. Hello everyone, I'm Kento Horita from Keio University. Today, I'm here to uh, talk about effect on the lighting condition for human emotion and task efficiency using electronic program. Now, let me begin. I'd like to start by talking about background. In recent years, task efficiency improvement in workspace is necessary because working hours were shortened by overtime hours regulation. And therefore, to improve task efficiency, there are some previous researches uh, that focus on changing the environment uh, in the environment. Uh, previous researches on in, in the environment are classified in two as follows. <coughs> the first is evaluate task efficiency using task results, but this research didn't consider task efficiency reduction due to uh, emotion such as stress and fatigue. Um, so it is necessary to task, uh, evaluate task results, uh, evaluate emotions in addition to task results. The second is evaluate emotion changes due to indoor environment using biological signals. But in this research, relationship between emotion changes due to indoor environment and task efficiency is unknown. So it is necessary to evaluate both uh, task efficiency and emotion simultaneously. From the above, uh, the motivation of this research is clarifying the effect on the writing condition for human's emotion and task efficiency using EZ. To achieve this motivation, we perform EZ measurement under three writing condition. Writing conditions element are intensity of illumination and glare. Intensity of emission amount is amount of light received uh, per unit time per unit area. Glare is that that causes my fatigue and discomfort and decreases gaze. We verificate uh, following the two. <coughs> the first is evaluate humans emotion by EZ, and the second is to evaluate task efficiency by task results. The first verification shows and uh, results shows that calmness increased after task and writing without glare. And the second verification show results shows that task results was significantly higher and writing without glare compared to with glare. In conclusion, calmness increases and task efficiency is the highest and writing without glare. If you have any uh, any question, uh, please come to poster number eight. Thank you for your kind attention. So the next one is from Kurt Kung from University of Washington, Seattle. Hi, so my name is Kurt, Kurt Kong. So the topic I'm going to present is aeroponic and easy water on behalf of Paul Like Lab from University of Washington, Seattle, USA. So really just two keywords, aeroponic and easy water. We try to explore what's the interesting connection. So first, what is aeroponic? In a nutshell, traditional agriculture, you have the root of the plant in the soil and that's how they normally grow in natural environment. Fast forward, the hydroponic technique is developed. So hydroponic, you have the root of the plant in water, and you put nutrient in water, so plant can grow just fine. And then not just about, about roughly 100 years ago, the aeroponics idea has been explored. What is aeroponic? The root of the plant actually exposed in air, but plants still need water and nutrient. So the way the idea is you create a fine mist droplet. It's like a foggy environment. And if you control the droplet size just right, the plant can actually uptake the water and nutrient grow much faster. Well, at least faster, much or not, uh, we can talk. 
So idea was uh, started about 100 years ago, but not until 30 years ago, NASA took it to the next level and do a thorough study on aeroponic. Because it's water efficient and energy efficient, uh, they plan to use it on space station. So the second keyword, easy water. Also in a nutshell, that imagine, this is a top few diagram, by the way. So imagine the white screen is the hydrophilic material or easy nucleation material. Then one interesting what happen is water right next to the surface of such material form a different structure. And there are two consequences of the structure. First, uh, it's net negatively charged. Water originally is electrically neutral. You have negative, you have positive. And second, it excludes more particles and impurities. That's how we get this name, easy water. When you put these thing, two things together, you can understand why we're interested in aeroponic. Because one of the aeroponic by itself is one of the most advanced agricultural technology. It's also a very clean test platform without tho soil. And water membrane at the air-water interface is negatively charged. So we did a quick experiment to test out if there's any signal showing water after spraying, and we collect it, shows any sign of easy water. Trust me, it is, but we can talk more at the poster. So the whole point is, aeroponic has shown saving 99% water use compared to the traditional agriculture technique. Aeroponic also has shown improving plant growth. So our, our goal of doing this line of research is try to answer is easy water part, at least part of the reason why aeroponic is special. Thank you. The next presentation is from Jelena Munken from, well, Serbia. Serbia, <laughs> this time. <laughs> And here. Hello everyone. Hello everyone. So my name is Elena and I'm going to um, actually present a poster uh, on behalf of my PhD students who are uh, unfortunately not here today but they did the hard work. So um, my talk is actually continuing a bit on the talk uh, just done by Kurt and uh, what we were interested in is uh, why this easy, uh, easy water was different. So we performed uh, the study of this, we call it interfacial water adjacent to the hydrophilic poly polymer naphion, and we wanted to explore this water using, of course, aquaphotonics. So, in the first place, um, why were we interested? Because, um, uh, as you can see in this picture, this layer of easy water is quite quite big, um, uh, hundreds of micrometers in size. And there are lots of applications that can stem uh, from this um, uh, cre uh, creation of easy water, such as, for example, for water pur purification systems. But uh, it has also impl uh, impl um, in some implications in um, uh, biological organisms because uh, in uh, organisms we have lots of these membranes, hydrophilic um, surfaces that can create this water. So we wanted to know what what is going on with this water, uh, especially because the experimental results that uh, Pollock Club have compiled so far is uh, indicating that According, for example, uh, based on the results of um, refract uh, refractive index or uh, higher viscosity, there, there are indications that uh, this easy water um, uh, is uh, bonded very much, so more ordered and more crystalline comparing to bulk water. And there are limited, uh, quite limited methods to sort of like prove this hypothesis, but one of the methods which was very su suitable is, of course, aquaphotomics and near infrared spectroscopy. So uh, what we did, we created a, an experimental setup which consists of a Nafion membrane which was hydrated for 24 hours and it was really necessary to first hydrate uh, the, the Nafion because this polymer itself has a very complicated structure. Uh, there are many uh, sort of like water channels inside the polymer. Then uh, next to the surface of the polymer, in the very vicinity of the polymer, there is some uh, kind of water which is again different. But we were only interested in these layers 
uh, hundreds of micrometers of easy water. So in order to exclude all this water that um, is um, very much affected by the polymer inside and in this surface next to the, uh, immediately next to the polymer, we first took the spectra of the just hydrated nafion, then we filled the cuvette with pure water, waited for three minutes to easy zone to stabilize, and then took the spectra of the whole system together. And since we wanted to have the spectra of just easy water, uh, we completely, uh, by subtracting the average spectra of nafion, hydrated nafion in Quebec, we remove all these types of water uh, affected very much by the polymer. So what we had in this uh, result, even uh, with the just uh, slightly pre-processed spectra um, corrected for the scattering, we had a really sharp difference between pure water and easy water. And this red spectra show, uh, these red spectra are a spectra of easy water, show the seven nanometer shift towards longer wavelengths. And this, uh, uh, this is typical, for example, for the influence of decrease of temperature, which means that uh, the uh, that this water is indeed more hydrogen bonded compared to the pure water. And if we, when we developed uh, aquagrams based on this spectra, we saw more clearly that in the easy water we had extensive um, um, number of uh, uh, water, uh, water molecules with two, three, uh, four hydrogen bonds and a strongly bonded water. So comparing to the pure water, we definitely have more hydrogen bonded water in easy. That would be all. If you want more, you can ask questions in front of my poster. Thank you very much. Thank you, so, thank you all for the poster presenters. Uh, we all have uh, received this in our uh, little bag. And this is where you vote for the poster that you like best. You just put the uh, number uh, in on this form and you put it no, 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 there are more posters. So this has to be indeed good. Uh, tomorrow, by the end of the whole day, you put this in a box that is in front of the registration desk, and that is your vote. So please remember to, to do this. Thank you.